Welcome to the video. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my most used tool within Adobe Lightroom when editing my images. Next to the basic adjustments, this is something that I use all of the time. It's become so quick, simple, and easy to use that I will use it either on my laptop, on my phone, on a day-to-day -day basis to edit any kind of image that I've taken. And I think it really adds another layer of creativity and a bit of style and takes those photos to the next level. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the masking tools within Lightroom. Masking is basically uh, an ability and a tool to be able to isolate a certain area of the image so that you can apply adjustments and edits to just that section of the image without affecting the whole image globally. You can select multiple parts of the image and layer them on top of each other also and make edits to different sections of the image to really pull focus on certain points of it or detract from other parts of the image. This is such a powerful tool to really making your photos pop and stand out. It's really fun to use, especially now that it's become so easy. I remember back in the day when I started editing, back in the day, only about 12 years ago, but really then it was so different. You had to go into Photoshop and start selecting your selection or your area that you wanted to isolate. And it took hours and it became really tedious and boring and I never did it. But now, thanks to the advancements that Adobe has made to Adobe Lightroom, it's really, really easy as I've already mentioned. If there are multiple ways in which you can make these selections. There are some AI tools, which I have to say are pretty impressive and have blown me away of recent, as well as some manual tools that you can add and apply yourself. I'm going to run through a few of my favorites and just show you a few examples on images that I've taken so you can see what an impact they have to that image. Some of them just really minor changes, but they make quite a big difference to the image itself. And I hope that this gives you a bit of confidence to go into Lightroom and try it out yourself and see what you can do with it. Because as I say, you can go whichever direction you want. Again, it's creative, so you can take it where you like uh, and apply it to your images and see what works for you. So let me get into some of my favorite ways of making the selection and a little bit of an insight in, into how I would use them on certain types of images. Okay, so if we head over to Lightroom here, I have an image that hasn't had any masking applied to it. So if you head over to the right hand side on the toolbar, you will see this circle icon with a dashed exterior line on it. If you hit that or press M on your keyboard, it will bring up your create new mask options. At the top here, you will see your AI generated masks, which are subject, sky and background. And then you will see a selection of, kind of more manual masks that you can apply below it. To kick things off, I'll just tell you my top five before we get going. Typically, I use radial, linear and brush masks in the manual section, and then I'll use the automatic subject detect or the sky detect in the AI section. All of these I use very, very regularly. Let me kick things off by showing you how one of the AI masks work. So for this image, for example, perhaps I thought I'd overexposed the sky on this drone shot. So all I really have to do is hit this sky option here. It will tell you a little bit about it there, what it does. If you press it, it will start detecting and instantly it has picked out the sky. Everything is picked out is highlighted in red so that it's really clear for you to see. You can toggle this overlay on and off and you can also adjust the color and the opacity of the overlay if you wish. I've upped the opacity on mine just so it's really clear to see but I've left it in the default red. You can play around with that as you wish. Now, any adjustments that you make on the right hand side, as you normally would on all of the sliders within Lightroom, that will just affect this section and this portion of the image. So quite simply, I could just maybe drop my highlights a bit to bring out a bit more of the detail of the sky and perhaps even the exposure a bit. Maybe I think the foreground is quite warm on this image, so I could just adjust my warmth slider there. These are very basic adjustments, but I just want to give you an idea of what you can do. Now. As you make those adjustments, you'll notice as I'm holding the slider that the overlay disappears. And this means you can just see what kind of effect you're having with that slider. And as soon as you let go, it comes back again. As I already mentioned, you can toggle the overlay on and off if you prefer. And you can also hit the little eye icon to turn the mask on and off, which is really useful because you can see what kind of a difference that you've made. If you do want to start stacking layers and masks on top of each other, that's totally possible. You can go to your heart's content. What I would recommend if you hit this three dots here on the mask, you can rename it. Now, 
that can be useful. So perhaps I would just quite simply call this sky because if you are adding multiple masks, it gets a little bit confusing. So you can do that. And within that option, you have other options within it, such as you can invert the selection, you can duplicate and invert the selection tools I use all the time as well. And of course you can delete and hide these layers as well. For example, another uh, mask you might want to use on this image, if I press plus here, you then have all of your options again. So maybe I wanted to add a little radial gradient. As I mentioned, I do like this one. Sometimes I use this to add a selective vignette, which is not just in the middle of the image. So for example, if I press radial gradient, perhaps I want to bring a little bit of focus to this shed in the right hand corner where there's a nice bit of light down here. So I can make quite a big one here. You can adjust the feather as well of the mask up here so you can make it quite harsh or you can really have it in the middle where it feathers it really nicely and then it blends into the rest of the image now here is where maybe i would invert invert the mask so i would here click on the three dots and i'm actually going to duplicate and invert the mask i'll show you why in a minute so I've now got the mask one inverted, which is the rest of the image. Perhaps I just want to drop my shadows on that. Maybe even just drop the, the exposure very, very slightly. I can then go back to my initial mask, which just affects that shed area. Perhaps I'll just bring the exposure up very, very slightly, add a little bit of contrast, and then that's probably it for me. You can see then it's just drawn attention to that shed in the right hand corner. So that's quite simple on that image. Let me show you a couple of other examples. Uh, for example, this is a thumbnail shot I did for a previous video. If I head over to my masking, you'll see the mask that I've already applied. I basically used the select subject AI, which selected, if I look in mask one, it selected the card reader that I wanted to highlight because I felt like it was a little bit dark. If I toggle it off, you'll see it's quite dark. And then if I toggle it back on, and remove the overlay, you'll see it really makes that pop. So all I've really done is boosted the exposure just a little bit and the shadow. That was quite a simple edit, to be honest with you. I then inverted the mask so that I could dumb down the background a little bit to make it pop off even more. And I just simply dropped the shadows and hey, voila, you have the result. So it's gone from something that was quite dark and you couldn't really see the details to making it really pop and stand out. Here's another example. A really small edit on this one, lovely juicy burger that I had pre-Christmas in London. And if you head over to my masking, all I did was brushed in the area around the burger itself in the middle because I felt like it was just a little bit dark. Um, I'll turn my overlay off so you can see it and it's nice and light. And then if you, if you turn it off, you can see it's a bit dark. And if you turn it back on again, it brings out the detail of the burger really nicely. I simply chose the brush, brushed in there, maybe a little bit of an exposure and a shadows adjustment, actually quite a big one, to bring that out and hey voila, you have your result. Here's another one where I used a linear gradient on the foreground. You can see that the mask has been drawn up here. I just drew that linear gradient up. By holding shift, it holds the linear gradient perfectly straight, or you can bring it in at an angle if you wish. And all I did to this one was just drop the shadows a little bit because I felt like it was a bit grainy in the shadows down there. I just raised the exposure a touch. But what really made a difference to this image is this area down here, if I turn this off, was actually quite yellow. And I felt like the rest of the image was quite blue and steely. So I dropped my temperature down quite considerably to minus 37 to help it match with the rest of the image. And for me, I think that made quite a difference. So there's a good few examples of how you can use masking. It's just a quick one because I didn't want to go on forever talking about this because I could go through many images and show you how crazy you could go with it. I did just want to show you this image just to finish things off and show you that you can really start stacking layers to help bring an image to life. This is one of my bucket list and one of my most favorite images that I did go to town on, especially because it was shot on a drone. And you find if you shoot on a drone or a phone where you don't have much aperture control or as much control over the settings, that absolutely everything is in focus and everything is very sharp. And I don't really like that look. However, for this image, I needed my drone and that's what it had to be. So I did quite a heavy edit on it to really draw attention to the castle and make it pop out and try and detract from other parts of the images so that you had a bit more of a focal point. And if I go over into my masking here, you'll see I've added eight masks. I mean, I'm sure people go more crazy than this, but for me, this was quite a lot. I added a variety of masks from radial gradients to kind of highlight that castle itself. At the time, I don't think the subject select was available because this was a couple of years ago. So I just used the radial gradients. Um, I suppose I could be a bit tidier with it, 
but it does the job. Um, and I added, you know, duplicates and I was adding ones up in the sky and I did a nice um, linear gradient on the foreground because I wanted to shut down a few of the shadows in those trees so that you really focused in on that castle. And if I just show you by toggling the little eye thing, that was the before image and this was my afternoon. It really just made that castle pop out, especially as I've had this one printed for my wall up here. Anyway, that's that. I hope you found this useful and you will now go have a go at doing a little bit of masking yourself. If you have any questions, please do drop them below. I'd love to help out. Um, I will continue playing around with my images forever, I think, with all of these new tools and try and make them my own. Editing styles change all the time. Um, and I'm sure if I look back on some of my images, I could go and re-edit them. That might be a fun thing to do if you don't have anything new to edit at the moment. Um, but enjoy, enjoy your editing and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.